Jesus the Son of Man Part 2 What is the place for the incarnation of the Word in God's plan? Did God have an initial strategy to save humanity long before it was actually realised? Did Jesus have a place and key role in this plan, in God's strategy? Can we talk about the existence of a mystery plan of God, a plan kept secret for all of these things? God in his desire to direct man in the right way sent his word identified by his son to whom he housed a material body that is visible and knowable. Jesus is the way to God to know him as he is but crucially he is the gateway to the salvation of the human soul. The Bible is written word says clear John 17 3 and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. But the problem is this still has filled many Jews to this day. God did not grant him a body of glory to impress eager men, but a humble one, like the vast majority of people with whom Jesus Christ identified here on earth. This was a big conundrum for the man who had been expecting a Messiah to rid them of Roman oppression. Although humility is in line with the essential principles of the kingdom of God and is related to the truth that knowledge boasts, man's expectations of an omnipotent God have been deeply shaken, but man's reaction did not surprise God. Luke 2.34 Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. He will do this from the point of view of his birth, way of life, suffering and the moment of death. The Bible teaches, Philippians 2, 6, 8, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross by this noble act he became radically different from god's opponent satan who had at one time reached the highest perfection being full of wisdom and perfect in beauty and all this until the day that his heart was lifted up because of his beauty and he corrupted his wisdom. Ezekiel 28, 12, 17. We must mention the existence of a mystery strategy of God in the book of Colossians we find. Colossians 1.26 The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. The same thing is mentioned in the book of Romans, Romans 16.25-26 According to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest, and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations, according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. So the Creator had a mystery plan that addressed both the major complications on the earth and those in heaven. Some problems seemed to be suspended in time, and thus were waiting for the right time to be solved. Colossians 2.2.3 to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Number one, what was the mystery of God?
There is only one answer, his son, the incarnate word. We find this very clear in the epistles to the Colossians. Colossians 1, 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Colossians 1, 18. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? That is all things he may have the preeminence. Colossians 1.17 And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Colossians 1.20 And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Colossians 1.19 For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Number two, what were the major goals and objections of this project? A, the first major goal was to unite all created things again and reconcile everything with himself. Ephesians 1, 9, 10, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. Colossians 1.20 And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Colossians 1.21.22 and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 19. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. All of God's plan to reconcile all things to himself could only be accomplished by someone with divine powers and worthy to represent the kingdom authority of God. He could only be one like him, that is, Jesus, his son. He gave him the heavy task, with all the honour that was due to him, to start and fulfil this great endeavour. When God told man, Thou shalt surely die, Genesis 2.17, he was not joking. From this perspective, God did something special. 1 Corinthians 15.45 And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Directly related to the human goal was another intention. 1 John 3 8 For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the strategy was aimed at the one who determined this state of work, bringing a lack of unity, the fall of harmony, and the corruption of mankind. The plan of his adversary Satan was to be actioned and thwarted. After Adam and Eve fell into sin, it seemed like the plan, Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, had taken a nosedive. Satan was rubbing his hands with satisfaction, as if he had succeeded in undermining God's original plan with mankind. The early part of human history described in the first chapters of Genesis gives the impression that we are dealing with a resigned God who directs from time to time what is possible. This notion does not reflect the truth as God cannot be defeated. The image of God defeated by his creation does not reflect the vision of an almighty omnipotent God. With this logic, anyone can agree, including his adversaries. 
it was only a matter of time before his plan was actioned. C. One of the major goals was restoring communication between God and man. Humanity uses verbal and non-verbal language to communicate. But first and foremost, he spoke with words, but God spoke too. Job 33:14. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. In this way, he revealed his will regarding what is good and bad for man and what he expects of his creation. But human history presents a sad dialogue between man and God of rebellion, lies and misunderstanding. At the end of the ages, he revealed himself directly through the one who knew him best, his son. Hebrews 1-2 Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Galatians 4-4-6 4, 4, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Romans 5, 18, 19. Therefore, as though one man's offence judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Hebrews 10, 12, 14. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time wait until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Number three, what was the strategy for carrying out his plan? The answer is directly related to the human body prepared for his son, who initially in heaven had a spiritual body of glory. Thus, after fulfilling the plan for which he came to earth, he would acquire again. The high standard of morality and holiness in heaven could only be fulfilled by God himself. No one, not even the angels, much less the animals or the people, could rise to the level of holiness required by God. Galatians 4.4 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law. John 7.28-29 Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know, but I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. In the book of Hebrews, we also find the attitude of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 5, 7. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Please retain a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasures. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. The Gospel of John told us, John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. At the end of his earthly ministry in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, John 17, 4, 5, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. With this in mind, what conclusions should be drawn related to everything that Jesus is, including his divinity? You have just watched part two of the article, Jesus, Son of Man. This article includes four parts. Each part of it, it provides as many answers as possible to the questions that exist on this complex topic. Part one, why a human body? Why the incarnate word and nothing else? Part three, was Jesus God incarnate? Subtitles, why is it important that Jesus was incarnate in God? Can we speak of Jesus as fully God and also fully man? Part four, who is the son of man? Subtitles, the humanity of Jesus without sin. What does it mean that Jesus came into a sin-like nature? What is the place for the incarnation of the Word in God's plan?